everyone. Welcome to a very special episode of the Sugar and Spikes podcast. So the last episode Tammy and I did together, it was all about entrepreneurship and mental health. And we said that we were going to continue on with a bit of a series around entrepreneurship and mental health. We're going to talk about anxiety, imposter syndrome, all that good stuff um, that a lot of people aren't really talking about in the most um, effective way. We will be bringing that up. The deal is, since we last recorded, a lot of things have happened. Life really hit both Tammy and myself pretty hard. We've had some illness, we've had some life shifts and major events where we just haven't been able to record. But I am dedicated to getting you guys the best content on the most consistent basis. So we're going to make it work. How are we going to make it work? I am giving everybody a super sneak peek at a piece of the training that happened this month in the Legendary Leadership Society. If you guys don't know what the Leadership Society is, it is a paid members-only portal with all of the backlog of the amazing Sugar and Spikes content, Goal CPR, Conquering Your Imposter Monster, Stress Slayer Workbook, um, Leading Live, How to Make a Livestream that'll Stop the Scroll, all that good stuff comes right when you sign up. And I drop four trainings per month around leadership, developing your business your way, entrepreneurship and mental health in a much more applicable um, manner with like workbooks and pieces like that, and as well as branding and marketing pieces. That's what this week's episode is. This week's episode is roughly 25 or 30 minutes of the branding training, all about starting off with a brand. How do you brand? What to do to brand? What not to do when you think you want a brand? All that stuff. And you get to hear a pretty rarely told story about the entity that happened before Sugar and Spikes that never saw the light of day. Um, I really hope you enjoy it. If you do want more information about the Legendary Leadership Society, head on over to DesireeW.com. Enrollment is open. It's just launching. You guys are right on the cusp of something new and great. And there is early bird pricing available through July 6th. All of the early bird information is on there. Hope you enjoy it. If you have questions, comments, concerns, critiques, head on over to the Sugar and Spikes Social Club, a free group available to any and all badass entrepreneurs who are ready to build their business their way. And yeah, here we go. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the um, branding design training, the training that currently still has no name. Um, But I'm super excited because this is... Branding in general is a topic that I love and I am completely obsessed with, partially because um, when I was in grad school and I was getting my MBA, I really focused on the marketing and branding piece. Um, Also, my master's is in applied psych, and I really applied that to a lot of marketing case studies and everything. So when it comes to branding and creating relationships and um, consumer loyalty and stuff like that, that's one of my biggest um biggest like geek out topics um and really that's been one of the things that I get the most consistent compliments on besides working one-on-one with clients and the stuff that my content does people that see me day-to-day on social media and just with what I do one of the biggest um most consistent compliments is oh my god I love your brand um and there's a lot of stuff that goes in with it so Today, I really wanted to kind of start to unpack this whole topic that is branding, what it means, what it's about. And one thing is I really want to, um, I want to make sure that these more objective topics and stuff that aren't just like mindset related, um, I want to make sure that there's some tangible takeaways. So I have my designer with me, um, special guest designer, Dean Williams. Hello. He does all of, all of my logos mainly. He checks my stuff for, um, (laughs) margins and things nine times out of 10. He makes sure my stuff looks at the very least passable um not because he's not skilled it's because i want to get shit out there and you know design waits for no man um 
but yeah he's done all my logos he keeps my colors looking good all of that stuff i have him with me to talk about um we're gonna unpack the branding piece and then we're gonna also dive into a little bit of basic um not necessarily color theory but maybe like the psychology of color and stuff um and how you can use color for your benefit and to stand out and really break the mold um so let's see Dean, do you have any like intro you want to say about all of this? Um, <clears throat> well, I think I, uh, I mean, for anyone that listens to the podcast, I kind of introduced myself um, on the it's it's up now, right? The yeah. Episode. The ocean episode. Yeah. So the uh, the episode where we accidentally went to church. <laughs> um, but yes, I am uh, I'm a graphic designer, and uh, I have um, been doing graphic design for close to five years now five or six years i would say yeah. um well yeah five years plus school mm-hmm. um and uh it's it's kind of uh my probably probably one of the biggest passions i have uh at the moment so and he's married to me which means he gets to do all of my stuff and not get paid i mean i do <laughs> like i do have a lot of uh, there, there's a lot of projects that I that I really enjoy doing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. So I figured we could kind of open it with talking about my branding and unpacking the strategy or almost lack of that went into creating my branding. And one thing is, um, we could talk about that maybe in conjunction with the branding ideation process, which is something that both Dean and I have a an approximate fuck ton of experience with, given our um, kind of nine to five day jobs. So Dean, do you want to kick us off with that? Um, sure. <clears throat> and I think uh, I think a good a good place to start is uh, with a little bit of definition. Um, a lot of people will think like, oh, I need like I'm, I'm starting a business. I need a logo. I need mm-hmm. a, a brand. Uh, they may even say I need an identity kit, mm-hmm. um, but it, there's a lot of those are all very different things, um, and so I think it's important to start with you know what is a brand, what is a logo, what is an identity. Yeah. Um, so uh, the brand uh, is uh, I'm going to go ahead and quote uh, Marty Newmeyer in the Brand Gap uh, wrote a brand is not a logo, a brand is not an identity, a brand is not a product. Uh, a brand is a person's gut feeling about a product, service, or organization. So your brand is the way your audience sees you. Yeah, it's uh, how people respond to you. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so you've got uh, your your logo, your identity, and um, your copywriting, and everything is part of it. Mm-hmm. Um but and i like to just to chime in like i like to joke um and dean and i joke all the time we're like we'll be in a store and i'll say something and i'll be like oh that's totally on brand like it's it really is anything that connects with like emotions and stuff that you want to evoke when people think of you your services the products that you offer Mm -hmm. yeah so uh so your brand is is kind of this uh, amalgamation of everything you've got and how uh, your audience perceives uh, everything that you've put forward. So, yeah. like, you can put forward this uh, this image of yourself and the, or this image of your product, but if that's not how your your audience perceives it, then mm-hmm. it's not quite your brand. Yeah. Um, and it's imp- it's really important to know what you're trying to put across um, mm-hmm. because you can, to a certain extent, uh, affect like how your public views you yeah and that's the thing um and i do want to note that when it comes to branding like logo identity kit hell even colors fonts all that stuff those those do not make up your brand you can have your brand before you have any of those yeah and i think one thing like i really i feel like unpacking the timeline of from action and attitude to where we are with sugar and spikes really can give us a um like almost a what to do what not to do type of situation because 
I know I definitely made some beginner mistakes and then we kind of found our footing in terms of strategy and development and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, So, I mean, I guess I'll open it with, if you guys didn't know, before Desiree W, before Des W, before Sugar and Spikes, before all of the loveliness that you guys have come to know and appreciate, there was action and attitude. And that, before we launched the website, before we posted an ad, before we had anything really defined to offer, Action Attitude had a logo, Action Attitude had colors, Mm -hmm. Action Attitude had this whole, like, system of stuff. Yeah, and that's kind of partially on me because... Uh, that's my go-to is the, oh, we c- I'll build you an identity, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> which, uh, so yeah, the, the identity is all your visuals. Mm-hmm. Um, that is your, your colors, your logo, um, just sort of the, your, your, how you portray yourself. It's your, uh, it's your brand's wardrobe. Yeah. It's your face and wardrobe. But you can't have that if you don't know what it is you're doing like you can't you can't show up to a store and be like i need clothes if you're not sure if you're going to a picnic or an award ceremony you know so and that and that was how action attitude was developed it was we need this consultancy and we had no idea what like what we knew what we wanted to do but it wasn't super refined and so we went with we want all the fun stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's the stuff that you can see. It's the stuff that you can kind of, I mean, even view progress on. Yeah. It's, and it, it is like, it's what I lean towards first because it's what I know. I most. feel like I, I honestly think that most people like feel like they need it. Mm-hmm. Um, because I mean, especially like when you're an entrepreneur, you're really clinging for any sort of identity and anything to like keep you tethered in this big wide ocean um so yeah like i mean it makes sense but the thing with action attitude is in case you guys guys didn't pick up on it it didn't last long (laughs) um i we spent probably three or four months working on visuals honing it getting the website done and then i went to go post a facebook announcement message like i I swear, I I feel like I did everything that now I'm like, don't do that. Um, But I built it all up and I kept it very much, not necessarily a secret, but on the down low. And I went to go announce it and to start marketing. And I was like, fuck, I I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know what I'm promoting. I don't. There was nothing behind it. It was a very well-dressed skeleton. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Um Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's a good um, that's a good sort of uh, metaphor for it. Uh, you've got your your brand or your identity, mm-hmm. your visual identity is uh, sort of if it's your wardrobe, then your brand is sort of the um, your whole the body of your well of and your company. I mean, for most entrepreneurs and stuff and especially for service providers like coaches and things like that. Like your brand is you. Yeah. Like for the most part, we can add a couple interesting names and everything. But if you were a one woman show, a one man band, your brand is you. Yeah, absolutely. Like, (laughs) so yeah, I mean, it's that easy and it's that hard. Um, So I went to go post. I had no idea what I was supposed to post. I had this like 30 second existential crisis. And then I was like, fuck, I need something. I need something to connect it with. Cause I had nothing to connect what we were doing with action attitude to. So then we shifted and it became, I became the face of the brand. That was where Desiree started and where my life coaching stuff really um, started picking up instead of an agency model um we scaled back we started up with one like i really took the reins on it and that was where the branding that is sugar and spikes kind of started Mm -hmm. 
because the thing is is like although i will say i was never a hundred percent a one woman show it was me i had my designer right by my side um if you've listened to the podcast if you've been in our groups you know that i'm not the only person that's a part of sugar and spikes i do have my main partner in crime tammy who helps keep me honest and true to the science of everything without getting caught up in the um the sparkly shiny woo and trendiness of it all so everything i've done was started like kind of as a trio and this idea of coming like of becoming the face of it was weird but then it was also that was kind of the unifying factor for everything right Mm -hmm. um so really i took six months do you know do, do you remember like was it six maybe ten months or so i I'm really bad with time. It but. was it was a bit where I I was just this amorphous algorithm, and that was really like where I became comfortable um, showing up just as me, yeah, um, and figuring it out and taking space while still nurturing my business. And then, um, really, I was. I feel like if we're rolling with the idea of your branding is the clothes and the visuals are the clothes and your branding is the person Then I feel like that was me going into the gym every day for six months and really like refining and building the muscles of what the company of what our business is yeah. and getting clear on that. And that's work that I feel like a lot of entrepreneurs feel like needs to be done in a day. I know I definitely felt like it needed to be done in a day or, you know, just sitting down and writing out a couple words. Um, it was definitely work. And then Sugar and Spikes came to be. And it came to be because we had, we saw a lot of positives over the course of six months operating under just my name. Mm -hmm. We learned what we didn't really want. We didn't want to be sterile. We didn't want to be like just another corporate consulting website. We, we learned a lot and then we brought it into play and the thing is is like even with sugar and spikes we didn't develop an identity like game plan it was we came up with a name Mm -hmm. which then needed a logo at that point we were just rolling with colors that we noticed were most used we didn't even pick out colors we looked at what we had been using right and uh my my general um technique anyway is to go black and white first Mm -hmm. uh, because any logo you make is going to need to work in black and white in case you need to put it on well in the old days it was a uh, on on a letterhead that would be faxed Mm -hmm. or photocopied um but just in case you need to print it in one color yeah um but so that's where i started black and white logo Mm -hmm. and then um once you have a black and white logo then you can easily add the color and we just went with the color that was most things that we saw that used. were most often used, yeah. Which is one thing with um, with branding when it is you as yourself. Spend some time getting to notice how you operate and what you gravitate to mm-hmm. most often, because that shows you your brand. Because you already have a brand, and it's about like refining and honing it. You know. Yeah. Um. So then Sugar and Spikes came to be, the logo happened, and from there, like, the thing is, is I feel like when your brand is truly sustainable, when you've kind of, like, found the sweet spot, not much needs to shift, right? Like, it just, it kind of develops. And that was where we were, maybe a year after the Action Attitude debacle, into something that just organically grew and develop right yep so that said so identity and presence online and everything that really started to get noticed um one thing that kept coming up was um people kept telling me i love the authenticity behind it which was easy because it just it grew naturally and we weren't trying, like, I wasn't trying to be anything that I wasn't. Um, my team wasn't trying to be anything that they weren't. 
Um, and then the other thing that comes up is the boldness behind it. And I think one thing that really causes people to comment on that are our color choices. Mm-hmm. Like, we use a lot of black. Yeah. We use a lot of black. We use a lot of gray. A lot of deep purples. Um, and the occasional turquoise. Right? Mm-hmm. Yep. How can such deep colors stand out so strongly? Um, well, for one, uh, black and white is a very, like, it's it's the highest contrast that you can get. Which really, that's all. That's, w- that's what our brand is. And so it's going to stand out. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of people will say, uh, you know, you want to avoid black because, oh, it's the color of death and people are going to assume they're like people are going to associate it with it's with such a downer death and darkness but it really like when used properly like think about it it's also the color of a black tie affair oh i was gonna say the black card <laughs> sure that too if um, you guys don't know what the black card is it's a metal american express where i think the yearly minimum spend is like six figures um but yeah, so you've got your, uh, like black. It's like it's the color of a tuxedo. It's uh, it it does in fact it does really represent, um, you know, luxury and sophistication, mm-hmm. and uh, it can represent an exclusivity. Yeah, it's uh, also timeless. It is. Uh, it's also, uh, it gives you the ability to have that really high contrast. Mm-hmm. Which is where you start to stand out. Like, contrast is what lets things stand out. Mm -hmm. Like, all of these, and I I don't mean to critique, but I mean, (laughs) if you don't know my style already, then (laughs) welcome to what I do. All these things that have these, like, pastel colors and things like that, like, they're super soothing. They're also boring and make me want to go take a nap. And it works, like... It really, it, it depends on the brand. Yeah. Um, and it works for a lot of brands. And it, for a lot of brands, it really doesn't work. Yeah. Like, imagine Coca-Cola with, like, a pastel pink. Yeah. It just doesn't quite fit mm-hmm. their brand. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, like, the tone level, I guess, like, if we're talking bright versus pastel, I feel like that specifically speaks to... The type of um, maybe like emotion or tone of the brand. Like if you have a very strong color, your brand's going to be very like if you're a very bold person and you have very contrasting colors, your brand's going to be bold. Right. If you are um, maybe I don't know if I'm thinking like a stress reduction coach and all about creating serenity and things like that then your brand's going to have softer pastels. Um, I think like confidence coaches and people that are looking to stand up, stand out from kind of the crowd, that's where those high contrast things really, really help out. You put our color palette together. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to that? Yeah. um, Honestly, the the color palette we're using um, is... The black and white, as well as um, this very close to Robin's Egg blue, mm-hmm. um, almost the, the Tiffany blue, with, but with a little more saturation, mm-hmm. um, which honestly that got picked because it's Dez's favorite color and it's so much a part of her... Uh, of my brand. Of her identity, <laughs> really. Um, that blue turned so into it, turquoise for a lot of stuff, though. Yeah, but it but it made sense. Mm-hmm. The, the amount, like, the the level that that blue is just so ingrained in her personality. Mm-hmm. Um, it, ma- it really made sense to use that. Uh, and then we, uh, and then as a, as a contrasting color, uh, you kind of can go across the, uh, if you have a color wheel, they're great to really look at. Cause you you can, can Google them. Yeah. Um, it's, you basically have your, your 12... Um, basic colors and um, there's all sorts of uh, techniques for picking a 
uh, set of colors. You've got your complementary colors, which are directly across. You've got your triads, which are like, you know, equally spaced three colors. Um, but for for Des, we went fairly complementary mm-hmm. um, with the uh, the teal um, to this maroon, um, mm-hmm. and it's pretty pretty close to across the across the color wheel. Uh-huh. Um, and that really gives you again that kind of contrast. It gives you a color that that is um, you know that you can use to offset the teal. And I I will say that when we were picking colors, it wasn't that Dean handed me the colors that I'm using right now and was like, here you go. Um, We were probably working with between six to eight different color options, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. And I had, so Dean used his designer like color theory brain to show me things that would work. And then I looked at it with my psych of marketing brain and with what I know colors to kind of represent and with what colors evoke in me and, I mean, collectively speaking, colors evoke in the general conscious. Um, And I looked at it and um, the blue, having a blue turquoise thing was very important to me, not just because it is so much my personality but because of the calming peace um to me blue is the ocean any shade of blue um it's just it's such a peaceful color but can still be bold which i feel like is just one of one of the tr- true contrasts in life which is why i'm obsessed with blues and greens um peaceful and bold super cool and then a couple of other colors that were presented were like a gold, which I was like, eh, that's a little overplayed. Not that I was really looking at what other people were doing. I was just like, eh, I wasn't obsessed with gold at the time. Well, and it's it, like, even if you're not really kind of considering what other people are doing, you don't want something that's like oversaturated in the market. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, also a part of it was just like gut instinct, but then the purple was um definitely going like my brand was really about like ex- exclusivity royalty like it may sound trite it may be cliche but deep deep um like jewel tones convey yeah. prestige convey exclusivity and that's what i was going for um to be honest, my goal when I designed my website, my goal when we were designing our brand was not to appeal to everybody. Our goal was to appeal to people that felt like they either had fought or were fighting their way to finding their voice, their way to owning their stuff and really being the boss that they're made to be and stepping up in that like regal royal bigger than life type of way so that's why i went with purple and that's why that's why you see jewel tones and more brighter tones is because it really ties in with the emotion that i really hope that people connect with when they're on my website like man my goal with my website is to make you feel like you're landing like on the page of a total badass and that you could be said total badass if that makes sense Mm mm-hmm not to be some guys I'm going to show you it's kind of it's kind of dead like they took away a lot of images and stuff but I I do have some screenshots from the action attitude website the contrast between what where we started and where we landed worlds apart completely worlds apart all right that concludes this super special sneak peek of one of the pieces of content from the legendary leadership society there's still about 20 minutes left of this specific training where dean and i get deep into the actual branding process what it looks like when a client comes to us and says help me brand this thing we go through the whole process step by step in the rest of this training and talk about really tapping into who it is you're talking to 
your ideal client without getting too narrow. And I really speak a lot on the idea of an ideal client and what that actually looks like versus what a lot of other people teach. Um, also, the rest of June's trainings include essential info to understand your leadership style so you can show up to your business in a way no one else can. That has slides and audio, super good. There's a, another audio training that is all about creating content when it's the last thing you want to do, because I know creating consistent content is very hard. Um, and that's actually one of the things that I addressed earlier and why we're doing this podcast is because consistent content is important and being able to bend and flex and still be consistent is key. And then also there is a brand new workbook that is up on the Legendary Leadership Society, the self-care check-in, emotions, thoughts, and necessities. So you can make sure you're taking care of of yourself as well as your business because your business needs the best you that you can be you gotta you gotta take care of yourself you gotta know where you are so you can show up for your clients for your customers so you can do what you're made to do um, like I mentioned we do have special promo pricing through July 6th all of that good good information is on desireww.com be sure to check it out uh follow me on all the social medias just across the board i am des w ms mba d-e-z w ms mba if you like what we're doing be sure to leave a comment and a star review on itunes and if you have any topic suggestions anything like that like i said comments critiques good stuff like that pop on over to the sugar and spike social club and let me know And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.